guys, it's Roxy Renee. I'm so excited to film this video. My son, Lincoln, he's gonna be a part of the video. Come here, sweetie. He is now one years old and he is not able to keep still. So if any of you guys have toddlers, you understand completely. So you're gonna be hearing his voice throughout the video. He will be my new co-star. Africa was such an epic, epic trip for me as an African-American woman going to the homeland, the motherland of all lands, and just having a wonderful experience in that environment, on that soil. So if you guys want to know the details of my trip, please stay tuned. So first, I just want to let you guys know where it is that I actually went. I went to Egypt first. Tanzania, well specifically Zanzibar, which is a part of the Republic of Tanzania. Um, and then after Zanzibar, I went over to Kenya. And if you guys do not know where Zanzibar or Tanzania is, it is right next to Kenya and Uganda. So it shares a border with both Kenya and Uganda and they make up East Africa. Firstly, this trip that I went on was being planned for a whole entire year. I started planning this trip in about June of 2016. Lincoln was born in April of 2016 and soon after his birth I was having a serious serious case of wanderlust. So June when I started planning the trip, um, originally me and a friend we were going to go to Egypt, Tanzania, Kenya and the Republic or the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So I kind of remixed it a bit and because of the time wise, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do all four places and then give every place the adequate amount of time. So I went ahead and just took off the con. So I chose to do Egypt, um, Tanzania, and then Kenya after. After I made my flight to going from New York straight to Cairo, I had did it so, so far ahead of time, the ticket was really expensive. But the closer it got to the trip, I decided to go and switch it up a bit because I wanted to find a cheaper option. The ticket price going from New York to Cairo at that time when I made the deposit or put the deposit down with my favorite website, STA Travel, um, it was $950. Didn't seem bad. But the closer it got to the trip, things started kind of just lowering a bit. So I looked up flights again and I found a ticket that was like $500 cheaper from the original ticket price that I had, so I was ecstatic. It had a layover in Zurich, but it was only for an hour, and the flight overall was just not bad. Um, I flew from New York to Zurich, and then from Zurich to Cairo, and the flight from Zurich to Cairo was probably only like three hours. The flight from New York to Zurich was about six hours, um, so once I actually got to Cairo, I booked the hotel through Booking.com, love Booking.com. I booked every hotel that I went to on this trip from Booking.com because they have the book now, pay later. I booked a hotel that was directly across from the Pyramids of Giza. And if you guys are anything like myself, you start to visualize what a place is going to be like before you go. So I had this vision of the pyramids being like just sitting in the de in the desert, just chilling out. You know, you can walk up to them, take pictures, go observe them, go and just drool over them whenever you wanted to. But that's just really not the case. The pyramids of Giza actually have a barricade around. So I didn't quite understand this concept. So I got into Cairo um, at about 2.30 p.m. But the pyramid area closes at 4 p.m. to visitors. I didn't quite understand that again. So I'm thinking like, okay, it closes at four, whatever. I'll still be able to go over and take pictures, right? No. So my timeline was very tight. I was only in Cairo for about 10 hours. So when I got there, I was expecting to at least be in the airport for like two hours, you know, an hour, because you do have to do your visa form and everything when you get there. You can have it already when you get there, but most people just do it when they get there. So I go, I get through the airport. Getting through the airport was seriously like one, two, win, bam, thank you, man. You go up to one of the things that direct you as to where you go to get your visa. And then you pay your $25 at one of the banks that are in the airport. They give you this little this little receipt, but that's what they're actually going to use to put it into your passport. So you keep that, you go over to customs, customs puts it into your passport, and then you are good to go. I had to get my luggage. Again, didn't take very long. So I was only in the airport for about a half an hour, and I was ecstatic about that. But then another thing that was kind of stopping me was that 
for me to get from the airport to Giza, it was about another 30 minute drive. Now because my hotel was directly across the street, it was literally a three minute walk from the hotel to the entrance to get into the pyramids. I get to my hotel, they check me in, they show me my room. I wanted to change my clothes and get cute for the pyramids, but I didn't want to miss the pyramids either. So I was like, listen, what I got on is gonna be fine. So I put my things upstairs, grabbed what I needed, we went. You have to go through security. You have to put your bag and everything in there because they have to make sure that everything is safe. So you go through the little security area and then you're in there, good to go. But when you get in there, again, there is a whole like two mile radius before you actually get to the pyramids. So we had to get like a little, we had to get transportation pretty much. I'm gonna insert pictures and videos and stuff for you guys. Now we go front of the Saudi pyramid to tie it, chip and climb it and take nice photo. Nice. Yeah. You know the big pyramid, what the name? The big pyramid, his name is Kiops. Kiops? Yeah, the bigger pyramid. The second pyramid, Shafrin. Third one, Mikarinos. Kiops, Shafrin, Mikarinos. Mikarinos. Are those names of kings? The king one, Kiops. The second pyramid, Shafrin. The third one, Mikarinos. Okay. All here about king. Okay. The, the, the sphinx is first for the second pyramid. Hair for queen for Egypt. Body lion. Lion because take care for the whole area. It's garden. Uh, you understand? Yeah. We went up past the first pyramid and then we followed the trail down to the smallest pyramid and then we took pictures there. My tour guide was the shh, not gonna curse because baby is here. But he was amazing. He knew, he told me where to stand. He was like, I wanna make sure I get you the best pictures. He really made sure that my experience was magnified times like a million. So I'm very thankful for that. After we went to see the first pyramid, we dropped by the second pyramid. It wasn't really much to do there. So the, the largest pyramid is where most of the bang happens. There's another area where you cannot take pictures in front of or anything like that. It's a very protected area. Um, you can go inside. I think it's to go inside and take pictures inside. But you can't take pictures outside of it for whatever reason. Um, but I got to like see the hieroglyphs on the wall and the man was um, telling me what everything meant. It was a really, really meaningful, incredible experience. Now because we got into the pyramid area at about 3, after 3.30, 3.40 or so, by this time it was about to close. But my tour guide, he made sure that my experience was not jam-packed into a time frame. He would pay the guys a little extra just to let me take pictures and observe and things like that. So. He was just, he, was, he made my experience very, very meaningful. And he understood that I came such a long way and that this is something that I needed to see. So I really, really appreciated him. Um, and after we saw the largest pyramid, then we saw the Sphinx. Now the Sphinx in most pictures, it looks humongous. It looks like it's about the same size, if not bigger than one of the pyramids. And it actually is not big at all. It's smaller than the smallest pyramid, really. Um, so when you see pictures of the Sphinx, they're really amplified to, you know, just like an optical illusion kind of thing. It's really small. But again, very powerful. Um, just being there was absolutely incredible for me. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine going to Africa and not seeing those pyramids. So after that, I actually had a tour that I had, yeah. I actually had a tour set up with a company that I had contracted from TripAdvisor. Jip Taylor made tours, and they were supposed to take me to the pyramids, but they knew what time that I got in, so we weren't, I wasn't able to go to the pyramid area with them. 
my plan was to shower and to do you know just things that I need to do coming off of a super long flight so I did not get to shower I felt icky but I'm here to experience so the tour that I was on at the pyramids ended at about probably 4 15 4 30 or so but the guy took me to another place that sold natural oils nefertiti oil lavender oil all of these wonderful oils so i definitely want to stop by and just see what they have for sale and the guy actually has some handmade art and i bought this beautiful nefertiti painting um hand painting that um when you turn off the lights it is a whole nother image it's super super beautiful so after that it was already time for me to go on my next tour. So I ran upstairs, changed my clothes, did a little wash up, you know, a little quick little something, something. And then I got all of my things together because after this next tour, I was headed back to the airport for my next flight. So I go upstairs, I see the guys coming and parking and looking for me. So I immediately yell out the window and ask if they were there for me. Went downstairs. Then I went on a tour on the Nile River, which was Honestly, it was a bit of a letdown. Like it was, it wasn't anything that I imagined it to be. It wasn't much to see on the Nile River. All you're seeing is hotels. It's not like you're seeing any. It's, it's not. It's, it's not super picturesque. And the weather was not great either. It was very chilly. So I was pretty much shielding myself in the wind the whole time. Wasn't the greatest. But after the Nile River tour, we went ahead and went to a market, also where we got some falafel, and I was able to buy certain things. I didn't buy much, I did buy a little bit of jewelry. From the pyramid area, I bought um, three pyramids, you know, as souvenirs. So after that tour, we went to the airport, the guy dropped me off, and my experience in the airport coming into Egypt was great, but leaving out of Egypt, was not great at all. People were just rude and nasty, and they are just trying to extort you for money everywhere you turn. Like, you, if you think someone is just trying to help you because they are being nice, no. They are trying to extort you for your money. So, um, I had a few instances like that where I was just like, oh my goodness, you know, I can carry my own bag. I don't need you to carry my bag. And then, um, I was at the airport super, super early before check-in for my flight. Um, the service area was not even open for my airline yet. So I was sitting down waiting for a little bit. Then when it was time for me to check into my flight, I started seeing droves of people coming, lining up in the line. And I go over to the line to stand there because I'm like, I'm not going to be waiting here for two hours while this large group of people comes um, getting in the way. So I'm standing there in line and a group of people come and they just totally never mind me jumping in front of me as if I'm not even standing there. So I had a bit of an altercation with the people. I checked in my flight. I got into my next flight, and my next flight was from Cairo to Dubai. I had another layover in Dubai before making it to Tanzania. You guys stay tuned. This was my second time going to Dubai. So I had already did the whole desert tour. You guys know about my experience if you don't please go visit my Thailand, Dubai uh, YouTube video. I got to Dubai at about 6.15 a.m. Uh, my tour started at about 8.15 or so. The Burj Khalifa didn't open until nine. So, you know, when the guy picked me up, it was about a 30, 40 minute drive to get from the airport to the Burj Khalifa. We went to the Burj Khalifa, then after the Burj Khalifa, we went to the Dubai Miracle Garden. place especially if you're traveling with children it's really really a wower so uh, after the Dubai Miracle Garden we headed back to the airport we had did everything we were supposed to do so I got to the airport in Dubai and I was on my way to Tanzania mm -hmm. 